so much has changed in our industry. So, uh, I, I, I think I, what they put actresses through now is very different than back then. You just kind of shut your mouth and you did it, you know. And, and there, you know, obviously with Me Too, everything's kind of come out. It's a new world, thank God. Um, thank God. This organized chaos video is brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. so many different things in, in my life. I've done, you know, things that were genre, things that were not genre. But the one thing that that I particularly love about this um, is that it's kind of like an extended family. Like, I did The X-Files. That was my first big job when I got out of university. And people are still talking about it. They invited me on podcasts and reuniting with Cass and you know, it's just like, it's special. It's like it grows with you. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think that that's, that's something in this kind of genre world where it's like the fans embrace it. And, you know, it just, as Marita would say, not everything dies. <laughs> you know? So. It, going from, I mean, it, it was quite a few years between, but like when you went on The Walking Dead, did you expect you know, the, the, the huge excitement from fans and everything from from that show. Did I express it? Yeah. No, not at all. I didn't know what we were doing. I mean, <laughs> it was a zombie show. Uh, I mean, the, the comics were pretty huge, so if they were doing the show. I didn't know if everyone was like, well, well the show could be But, you same. know, a, a lot of networks passed on that yeah, show. Yeah, and, um, and then they were like, that was the biggest mistake they ever made. <laughs> but, like, you know, at the time... I mean, they should have known because it had Gail and her and Frank Darabont. I mean, it had like a list class of people. Uh, but even we didn't know. And I would get scripts. I remember when I got the script um, when Amy died. And, you know, you have to understand that, like, the words on the page, you know, zombie coming to life, da da da. And I was like, I don't know what this is going to be. You know what I mean? Because it's, if it's not played for real for real I mean really for real it can get kitschy and I think the beauty of The Walking Dead is that that season one everybody gave a thousand percent the actors the directors the cinematographers the crew and we created a world where sometimes something on the page 
that was very unknown to us. Mm -hmm. We had to kind of get used to it. Um, that we really uh, played it for real high stakes. It was like we were doing movies every week, you know. And and I think that the reason it was such a global phenomenon is that you could turn the sound off, and it didn't matter if you didn't even understand the language. Everybody um, related to the humanity of it, you know, and, and the characters. Yeah. Well, what was it like that you know the first episode that you got to be on the screen was an actual zombie? Was it like Okay, this is this is something new because I know you, you've done you did you know Silent Hill, um, so you've kind of been in that horror world a little bit, but you know they they kind of stepped it up for the Walking Dead show. Like I don't know if they stepped it up from Pyramid Head. That was a pretty well, big, yeah, true, true. You know Silent Hill. Point. Silent Hill was terrifying to shoot because um, we had a French director and he um, a lot of it was real. Like, when I was in the elevator with Rodda Mitchell, that was a real knife that was coming in, and I used to say, oh, really? it was a real knife that we were, like, dodging, and I said, Christoph, like, what if we slip? He's like, oh, well. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean, oh, well? And, like, I, for any of you who saw Silent Hill, I was really put on that ladder. I have a fear of heights. I was put on the ladder, and I was lowered over a real fire that had real... Six. Oh. That was not CGI. Okay. Well. And I was put up there for two days, and I ended up in the hospital after it. I had black ribs, and they 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 put a little a little protective thing under this part, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I said, okay, that's great, but what if it goes through my head? Like, what if I'm impaled? And they're like, well, we, we can't. Like, about that. So, you know, you have to understand I was so much younger where I'm like, you know, I want to get an A. Mm -hmm. You know, I want I want I want to do a good job. So I'm like, okay, you can put me on a, a ladder and lower me over a fire with spikes. Like I just want to do a good job. And now I look back and go, What was that? You know what I mean? Uh -huh. yeah. Because anything could have gone wrong. And I I love Silent Hill and yeah. I thought all of it was just special effects after the fact. I had no I mean, idea that it, it's special effects when you, you see me. My face burning off. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, and, and maybe they added a special effect to make the fire worse than it was. It was pretty awful to begin with. Um, but uh, but to come back to your question about the zombie, I don't remember my I don't remember the first time I worked with the zombie. I remember my most impactful zombie, mm -hmm. and that was the one in the RV, okay. the screwdriver. Okay. And um, and I actually dislocated six ribs after that. Didn't know it. Kept working. Didn't understand why I was having trouble breathing. But I was like, we had this thing on The Walking Dead where it's like we all tried to be tough tomboys, and it was like, like look, look at my bruise, look at my scratch. Like you know, the more beat up you were, the more you were like, okay, like I our. You had to earn it. You're like, it gave realism. It, yeah, 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 yeah. And it, and it was like, if you didn't get hurt in some capacity, like, you just like, weren't really in it, right? <laughs> so so I was all hurt, but I was like, you know, that's part of it, that's part of the job. And then I think somebody convinced me to go to a hospital, and they literally had to pop my ribs back in because they had popped out. And, um, so I got an A that day. <laughs> you know, I earned my meal. Between Silent Hill and The Walking Dead, you're like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. Now, I don't Maybe. even know like how this happened. I think, um, I think maybe because I'm a bit athletic, and um, you know, I was a sturdy little thing. Um, that uh, that for some reason these roles have found me. Um, but um, and I'm grateful. They've been, they've been fun. I like, I like. Um, I like stories about survivors, and even if Sybil died or Andrea died or whoever, I like I like telling stories, especially as a woman, of like having fight, you know, mm -hmm. not not falling back. That's why I loved Andrea because you know she was suicidal when you first met her, and she really wanted to die. She was jumping in graves and you know just completely lost her mind. And then she was like, no, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna move forward and and. And you know everybody has their day when they pass, but she refused to be a victim, and I, 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 I like that kind of storytelling. Mm -hmm. You know. 
and, and that's one of the great things about The Walking Dead. It's more about the humanity and everything yeah. else behind it, not just, hey, we have zombies coming out. But they're cute zombies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. So, much, so many people say, like, was it like hard? Like, were you really scared of the zombies? They were adorable. Like, <laughs> they they all went to zombie school. Like, it was like a ballet. They had little backstories. They, they all moved yeah. differently. And they were, like, sweet. And, and I was like, oh, my God. They, they're so sweet, it made your, the job harder because they would like come and go, hey, you know, would you want to have a coffee? Or, uh, you know what I mean? They were they were really nice people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was like you had to switch your brain. The thing that was easy is once you were really in it because the smell was so rancid. I didn't eat meat, and I'm a huge, like, lover of steak and burgers and everything. I couldn't eat meat for three years shooting that show because they used to put spare ribs inside the, the, the people and the, and the animals, um, you know, the fake ones, right? Yeah. Because the zombies had to act like they were eating. And so the smell of that was so horrendous that, um, that I think that, that that all helped our performance in terms of like, you know, not wanting to be there. There was a lot of it that was shot like in Georgia, Atlanta, all like, of it. area. And all so of it. it gets hot and humid. Oh down, my god. So I'm sure Yeah. It really ramped that up a little yeah. bit for you. But I like to be heated. First it was hard, but then you get used to it. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes like another character in the in the movie. You know what I mean? It was like the oppression I think visually, like you could see it on all of our faces and the sweat and the you know, it, I think it, it helped create the world. And since then, I mean, most recently, you've jumped to The Boys, which is, I mean, it's a, it's a different kind of superhero show, yeah. for sure. Um, how's the experience, you know, turning from going from Walking Dead to a, a series like The Boys? How, how has that been? It was like the perfect show for me because I, I got it during COVID. Um, I was in a very sad place. I had lost both my parents. So it was a very hard time, and uh, well, and then and then I got this offer to play this wacky superhero that got to sing with chimpanzees and uh, and be goofy. And I think that it was a very healing role for me because it allowed me to come out of my shell of everything that happened during COVID and 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 find some joy. And I just, I just latched onto it because it was just like, like, I don't know. It was, I, I had never sung in my adult life. And the, the very fact that I was able to put my energy and my heart and my, my thinking into something, uh, wacky and joyous, it was very, it was very healing for my heart. So I will always be grateful. If that's the last thing I ever do, um, I'm, I'm good. Well, that's yeah. Fine. And if anybody has any questions, if you want to start lining up over here, we can, we'll can jump to you guys here in just a minute. Um, so, with with the, the boys, I mean, any any hardcore shots in that, you know, you had ribs in The Walking Dead, Silent Hill, you were almost cooked alive, like, and The Boys is a pretty hardcore show, like, any, anything anything that's happened to you in that one thus far? In what, in what way? In, what way? In, in, you know, you, you know, Walking Dead, you said you were like, you know, we're, we're going to be tough. And, you know, I worked with broken ribs. It's, and then Silent Hill, you were like, I thought, I thought it, you know, Christoph was going to kill us. Kill me. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, uh, I didn't know if, it, if the way the boys is kind of, I mean, it is pretty, I mean, it's not made for kids. Let's just say that. It's not made, not for, made kids. for kids. It's at all. not made for kids. I mean, the, I mean, no, I mean, it was, that, that's what I loved about it. Is I mean, listen, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. There was a scene with me and Kimiko. Um, I love her. I love her so much. She's like so adorable and little and cute. And I think she's got a black belt. I mean, it was like she slammed me against a wall, and I thought I was gonna like break it too. And I was like, holy! I've been doing this a long time, and I'm kind of yeah. tough. But I was like, you could, you, you know. And she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, cause. Of course, I always say to the other actors, give it to me, give it to me, because yeah. I want to sell it for camera. Yeah. And then she really gave it to me, and I was like almost like a little mush on the floor. And I'm like, I'm getting too old for this. You know what I mean? 
But um, but it was um, what I loved about the boys um, was was the the terror of it. I mean, and I, I I'm sure anybody can relate to this. Is like I had not sung in my entire adult life, and they gave me two musical numbers. And I had to perform on stage, and I had to do a music video. So I had to learn how to sing really fast. And I had to sing in front of all of these people. And then it's aired, and millions of people around the world see it. And does it make sense to say good terror? Yeah, I, I because know what you mean. because it's like holy crap, this is so terrifying. I don't know if I'm going to pull it off. And then somehow you do. And you're like so grateful because they didn't even ask me if I could sing. They cast me. And then as they're zipping up my superhero costume, which took three months for them to to mold on me. I mean, it, literally it was like from scratch. They had to, two times a week I had to go in and they had to fit me, fit me, fit okay. me, fit me. Um, as they're zipping up the final costume, they're like, oh, by the way, we want you to sing two musical numbers. Are you okay with that? And I'm already cast. And I'm like, well, if you don't like it, I guess you can uh, dub me. So, um, so, so all of a sudden, there was this thing that I didn't even know I had to do in the, in, the, in, the, in the show. My point is, as I'm rambling, it was completely terrifying, as it would be for anybody, doing something that you've never done in your life, and then somehow facing that challenge, loving that challenge, and that to me is one of the highlights of my career. And I look back and the amount of roles that I've turned down or didn't pursue because people would say, can you sing? And I'm like, no, 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 I can't sing. Because I think that I had a family member tell me I was like out of tune once, and I was like, okay, I won't sing again, I won't sing again. And then because I had to, um, because I already had the part sing, it was like the biggest gift because now I can't shut up. I, I sing, I sing to you, I sing to everyone. You know, what I, mean? I sing. I wake up, I sing. I sing to the people at Starbucks. I'm, you know, and it's brought a lot of joy to my life. Good. You know, because I'm, it's, I've, I've, I've gotten goofier, and I like that. So you call your agent right away, and you're like, you know, add musicals to my list. I know, right? You know, I can take some. Yeah. Yeah, singing is great. I do it in the house all the time. My kids are like, why? Why are you singing? Like, it's it's a joy. Yeah, exactly. So I guess the answer to your question is is that the, the thing that was different about that is that um, instead of the brutality of ending up in a mm -hmm. hospital, um, it was um, it was a more of an internal terror of, of having a new skill set I didn't know I had and that I'm just so grateful, so grateful. That's awesome. That's yeah, weird. that I went through that fire. Yeah. You know? Let's uh, open up the questions. What do you got? Oh, okay. So I suppose I was interested because I hear a lot of people who say, oh, you know, I was doing this job and they threw actual knives at me or stuff like that, but it was worth it for my career. And I was wondering if you held that particular feeling or no, because that, that would be too much for me, personally. I don't want that. I mean, it's too much for me. I mean, I... So much has changed in our industry. So, uh, I, I, I think I, what they... What actresses through now is very different than back then. You just kind of shut your mouth and you did it, you know. And, and there, you know, obviously with Me Too, everything's kind of come out. It's a new world, thank God, um, thank God. But um, I mean, did it help my performance? Sure, you know. I mean, I I'm good enough actress. I could have done it without a real knife coming at my head. You know what I mean? <laughs> but. Um, but um, yeah, it's too much for you. It's too much for me too. But um, it, it was what it was, and nobody got hurt, thank God. So yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cry about it now. Well, please stay safe. <laughs> thank you. No <laughs> knives moving forward. Where's this green screen? Ah, oh, we don't need it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm a big uh, Sonic fan, and uh, now learning about the, how you were actually on the ladder. I never really, like, I had to turn away from watching that thing because it was so intense that you were acting so well. And now I'm like, wow. I was not acting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Actually, I really wasn't acting. I was I really really wasn't acting. I, because I was able to ad lib. So I basically just anything and everything that I was feeling or wanted to say, I like said. 
So uh, I guess my question is, um, how do you approach the role of civil? Did you get to play the games? I did, actually. Um, I, um, uh, believe it or not, Carrie M. Moss was supposed to play civil. You from The Matrix? Mm -hmm. And um, she got pregnant. And I was on my way to India. And um, my agent called and said, where are you? And I said, I'm in the car on the way to the airport. She goes, um, uh, Carrie Ann Moss just dropped out. They want you for civil, you start Monday, fly to Toronto. And I started the movie two days later. So I had the weekend to kind of figure it out. I had hair down in here. They cut it this short, as you know. I was like little, I was like, oh, my hair. Um, I started playing the game, started, but I'm a researcher and started just kind of massively researching uh, and fast track to catch up because I was cast so fast. But yeah, I, I was cast two days before. And I'm really grateful because even though there were elements of it that were like completely terrifying and scary in real life, um, I made a lot of really good friends and um, that I still see today. Uh, people of the crew. Um, my one of my makeup artists was on the boys. Um, my hair person was on the boys. Um, Carola, incredible. So um, you know, I, I love this business. I love, I love it. I love seeing people again. You know. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, Simon has also one of my favorite horror movies. Uh, I was curious if there were any. Um, Funny stories that happen on set or practical jokes maybe that were played. On Silent Hill? Maybe the knife coming through the elevator was it was his practical joke at you. Like, ah. Yeah, I mean I wish I wish I had a great soundbite for you, but it was really I think the director, he really liked um, he really admired Alfred Hitchcock who had this um, Hitchcock, I guess, kind of, I don't want to paraphrase, but I think he um, he thought that if he tortured some of his actresses that it kind of, you know, the story about what he did to, to be entered in the birds and stuff. Um, I wish that I could say that I remember fun comedic bits, but I think that the whole atmosphere on set was purposely scary because he thought it would give, uh, the, it, he would, it would bring out the best performances um, that you brought up. So, um, so her and I were kind of, you know, shivering the whole time, <laughs> but in a good way, in a sisterly bonding way. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, um, just as we were that was your first role, and I saw which you were great. Thank Did you, you enjoy working with Tony? Oh my God, I loved it. He was so nice to me. <coughs> was he, he's so funny. Isn't he? He's funny. He's very funny. And if, um, and he's a swimmer, I'm a swimmer. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, it was my first big job after I graduated university. I never in a million years thought I was going to get it because I was a baby. And, um, you know, when the breakdown came out where you go for Rubius, you know, special representatives of the United Nations, I was like, okay, I'm a decade too young. They're going to go more ethnic because I, I don't even understand what this name is. Okay. And, um, and, and I went very begrudgingly because I was like, why are you saying this? Like, I'm never going to get it. And I, I think that because I didn't think I was going to get it, I was calm. And I think that the Chris Carter and the showrunners um, responded to my, my calmness, which I guess is cool. Which is, yeah. you know, maybe indifference, but it was really because I just thought there was no way in hell I was going to get cast. I'm not going to get nervous about it. And then I got cast because I was like walking to my car. They were like, she's it, she's it. I was like, what? And, um, but I was always a little nervous when I started that show because, you know, I was very young and I was like, God, I hope they don't find out that I'm not 32. I'm not, you know what I mean? I was always trying to be a little bit more, um, Um, I, uh, I was always trying to act a little bit older than, than, than I felt because I felt like a kid and David was so kind and, um, and, uh, we would swim and 
and he would crack jokes, and he always um, he always made me feel right at home. And then as the years went by, I felt more and more comfortable because I kind of grew with the show as Jillian, as they all did. Um, but um, I just rewatched a bunch of those uh, X Files episodes, and it so holds up the test of time. It's so good. Like, it's better than I even thought. Like, I really love it. I was invited to do a podcast, so I've like, been reviewing it so that I can be articulate because it was so long ago. And um, and it just takes me back, and I just, I remember just only good times. Um, just very grateful for that experience and the friendships that I gained. And Dave is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for coming to Cincinnati. Great, appreciate you having me here. Um, one of my favorite shows um, when I was the Shield, and you did have a season of the Shield, which you know is absolutely fantastic. Um, how did you like any of the other guys that was and all that you know that then you all said? How was that working with him in that show? Because that show at that time period, that show pushed probably every envelope in its time. Yeah. For the things they did, the nuances that they brought up and it was just it was crazy to even think that they would push that kind of stuff on. I know it's kind of the way of that design. Yeah. Um, and the other actors that are on there too that you know still are you know gone on different dramas but how was your experience with that? It was incredible. Um, that is one of my most my proudest uh, that, that show was so incredible for me as an actor, as a person. Um, it, it is, I think, the one show that um, gave me street cred in, in, in Hollywood that people were like, oh wow, she's an actress. You know what I mean? Because uh, I was working with the best of the best of the best. Yeah. And, um, and then, uh, you know, I followed up, it was Forrest Whitaker, the year before, and the year before that was Glenn Close. And both of them were the guest stars for their seasons trying to break down Vic Mackey. And the very fact that Sean Ryan chose me to be the one that brought down Vic Mackey was yeah. the biggest honor ever. And I thought it was like the most incredible ending to a television series. And um, um, my God, that was... Um, that, that was a wonderful time. I'm glad you loved it. I well, loved it. It, it. it was, yeah. It, it's still one of the last times I saw that and watched it. Just, you know, even today, I mean, it holds today. Oh, yeah. I mean, still, the things that you see in that show, you think uh, they couldn't play today. You didn't think they could play back then. And they got away with so much. And it was just. Well, what I loved about it, and it was actually the same camera crew as The Mist. Um, so I knew all that. That's what I love about our industry. You work with the same people, and it's just like a family. Um, and and a lot of those the guy, the camera crew there, also were on The Walking Dead. And so, and it's my preferred way of filmmaking, which happens very rarely, where the cameras just follow you, where they just like the actors do their things, and the cameras literally are like birds that like are following you. And, and just getting it in real time. So it, that's what was so great about it. Um, uh, and, and sometimes they did that on The Walking Dead too, where um, they would just kind of like let the actors do their things and follow them with the camera and um, instead of having the camera stay, um, which is my preferred way of working, but you know, it's, I know it's very rare to be able to do that. Thanks. Thanks. I appreciate it, yeah. I was wondering how you got into acting. Oh, geez. Um, my parents are were in the business, and my first job, my first job, I played this guy Rock Hudson. You're too young, um, but Rock Hudson's daughter in a miniseries when I was six or seven years old. And the reason being is that my dad was directing. Um, a miniseries, and um, they couldn't get the passport for the girl that was to play the daughter in time. They needed a little girl, and they were like, what are we going to do? We start shooting tomorrow. I was like, I can do it. 
And my parents were like, no, you cannot, right? Like, absolutely not. And I'm like, why not? And the producer was like, oh, I'm going to give her a try. So, um, so that's, that's, it was kind of a coincidence. But that's, that was my beginning. But, um, but I didn't really take it seriously until much later in life when I studied theater and, you know, grew up. But, but it's a fun, fun little story that, you know, the little six-year-old me that was like, I can do it, I can, you know, never done anything, you know. Only, only a child has confidence like that. Confidence. Yes, I got this. I got this. Anybody else have any questions for, for Lori? Um, I did want to ask, you know, Walking Dead season one, Frank Darabond, and you worked with him on The Mist. Like, and The Majestic. And The Majestic. Like, you've worked with him multiple times. How, how is he to work with? Because he seems like he's very, very meticulous. And he knows how yeah. he wants things to be. Um, he's a visionary. He's an incredible storyteller. He's a phenomenal writer. He's a great director, um, and he's very loyal to um, his friends. And he works with the same group of people um, because I think when you work with the same people, it's like you know, okay, there's not going to be any drama. You know, you know, people are going to deliver. There's not going to be any dra drama. We're going to have fun. You know, and. Um, you know, he's been a wonderful collaborator over the years. I hope he does something else. Now, is there anything that you have in the works that you could, you could talk about coming out? Right right now? That, that you're allowed to say. There's anything Not anything here. I'm allowed to okay. say. Okay, anything you're allowed to say. Okay, that's it. joy in life is working with kids, helping kids. Um, I'm, I've always been really uh, involved with uh, uh, organizations and efforts to try to end human trafficking. So I think for me, if I never worked again as an actor, I I don't even know if I would miss it. I don't mean to sound good when I say that, but I, I'm grateful for the run it had. But I, and I hope there's more great stories to tell. Um, I hope there's parts that resonate in my heart, like the ones I've uh, they're few and far between for everybody, um, but to me, like, there's no greater joy than um, being part of something where you can help save a child's life and uh, take them out of a bad situation and give them a chance. Like, to me, that, that's it. You've been involved with a lot of organizations that, yeah. that, that do just that. Through, through years. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny because I, I've been doing it for a very long time and um, I, I don't I don't post a lot about what I do because I don't I don't do it for I do it for me. I do it for the girls and I do it for um, likes on Instagram, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, for many years I've been doing kind of wacky things, getting on planes to different countries and my mother was like, I don't understand. Like, why are you going to Colombia? Why are you going to Africa? Why are you going, you know? And um, over time she began to realize um, that I wasn't insane and that I was actually um, with good responsible people that were trying to, to make a difference in a real way, you know? So yeah, that's my last purpose. And to sing. And what? And to sing. And to sing doing it! Yeah, right. <laughs> I have two questions. The first one is what would um, what would be some tips or tips that you get someone who's trying to um, break into acting? Um, now there may be some people that disagree with this, um, but the, the world is ever changing. I think it's important to get an education. I think it's important. I got one. Um, I 
I'm pragmatic, I'm positive, but I, I think that you need to prepare yourself in this life to survive at all costs. And I think it's important to have a skill set um, that is pragmatic in this life. Because my business is so unfair and it doesn't make sense. And you can be the best person for the job and not get it. You can remind the director of his ex-wife and he hates you and he doesn't even know why. There are so many things that go into casting that you have no control over. And so I think that it is an important art form, but I also think it's an important thing for um, your sanity to have another passion as well. Um, I have other passions other than this, and it's been my, my lifeline. And, you know, there are people that would disagree with me and say, you know, you know, give this a thousand percent. If you have any doubt that you're, you know, not believing in yourself, I believe in myself. But I'm also pragmatic, and I, I think that it's important to get an education um, and something to fall back on and something that can pay the bills. And I also think that you should read the place and study with the best and learn the technique of acting because it is a, a, an art form. And you can do that as like um, uh, on the side. You can do that, you know what I mean, as, as your passion. And then and then maybe it t takes over and it becomes your life and that's fantastic. But especially with kids when they ask me, like I'm, I'm just, I just really think it's important to, to get an education, you know? If you don't want your life to be about, that's the thing. It's like, sometimes it's worked great in my favor, and I'm very grateful for the times it has, but like, you can't have your life be about walking into a room and having people in chairs pick you. Like, it's not a healthy place to, it's not an empowering place. And it's Vegas, it's going to work, it's not going to work. You know, and but anyways, I'm repeating myself. School, 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 school. Yeah. My second, second question is, what brought you into um, human trafficking line? Uh, I have kids here, but sometimes it's a little messy. Okay. Uh, my kids. Uh, okay. Also. Awesome. Um, it's uh, to the the long and the short of it. Um, uh, many, 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 many years ago. Um, there was a, during the, the writer's strike, uh, on my bucket list, I always have these bucket lists of what I'm going to do before, you know, I kick it. And then I usually, because I put it on, put it out there, I usually do them within two years because I really believe when you put your mind to something, they happen. I volunteered to work in a daycare center for HIV orphans. I did this for many months in Africa. I found out, this is gonna be heavy, it's heavy. I found out that a lot of these children, infants, two, three, four years old, had HIV because there is a myth that if you have sex with a child, that you'll be cured of AIDS. And I just couldn't believe that this existed. This is a myth that exists all through Southeast Asia. This is a myth that exists in many cultures where children, they think it's a purification. Are you following me? Yes. I worked with these children. I saw them get sick. I came back to Los Angeles. I did not want to be an actress. I was like, I felt like everything cellularly in my being was like, people need to know this is happening in the world. Like attracts like. I started meeting people that um, were very uh, passionate about abuse against children. They opened my eyes about how not only is this abuse happening, but there is a market for it. And then I found out that Cambodia is one of the biggest markets for it. So I went to Cambodia by myself, and I met people that had similar interest in checking this out and helping the kids. Rescued a bunch of toddlers out of a brothel. And that's kind of where it began, and I just met these incredible people who just were like, and by the way, this is happening in America. This is happening all over the world. It's a billion dollar industry. And once I 
was exposed to it, and it's international. Um, uh, I was approached by ex-CIA people to go on mission to Colombia, um, which everybody, a lot of people know about because I was outed. Um, you know, it used to be quiet before I was outed. But, um, but basically, once you're exposed to it, once you see it, once you see children being abused like this, they, you know, um, you can't not do something. And so anything that I can do here in America, in another country, anywhere to, um, to help break down a, a trafficking ring, to um, help get kids home, help kids get out of the bad situation, that's like, that's everything. And then what I love is that people are becoming more and more aware of it. And it's all over social media now. And I feel like this young generation is um, getting very hip and, and, and protecting themselves and seeing the signs of how to protect themselves. Sorry, it's heavy, but it's important to know. I, I've worked with Department of Child Services for 16 years, so we see it. You, you see it. But so you're doing the same thing, you know? And don't you agree that when you see this, you can't unsee it. Correct. And you just, it's like breathing. You just kind of are like, okay, what can I do to help here? You know? Yep, thank you. It's nice to meet you. Thank you. All right, this is going to be our, our last question. Okay. Well, it's extremely frivolous compared to the previous one. <laughs> yeah, sorry guys, I know you're at a convention, but it's like, it is it is a part of who I am, you know, and you get it or you don't. But, you know. Okay, it was just got a little brain off the top of my head. Is there any rules that you were up for that you really wanted that you didn't get or disappointed for? Uh, when you come to the conventions and stuff, what are you doing off time? Have you visited any sites around here? And, oh, um, we all like to come, um, meet your folks, get autographs and what have you. Have you ever, when you went to any other shows, is there anybody that's like, I got to see them? You know, they want to go with me, whoever. Thank you. Um, I'll answer it in reverse. Um, uh, my uh, partner is obsessed with William Shatner, so I, you know, had to do my duty and go and get the autograph today. And then I was like, I sympathized with all you guys because I was like, is this how it feels? I was tongue tied. I was nervous. I didn't know what to say. I felt like an idiot. He was completely sweet. We actually just did a movie together. We did an animated film together. Um, but we didn't meet because we did our stuff, you know, at a different time. But I was the villain and he was the other guy. This great animated film called Fireheart. But, um, but yeah, I was like completely nervous and I, 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 don't, I couldn't even put a sentence together. I was like, this is so strange. <laughs> you know? It's a legend, so it's even So what? I think it's just, I don't know, the whole thing. But he was really, really cute. Um, so... I'm going to make get major points when I get off the plane because I got the autograph from my husband who literally listens to Star Trek every day before he goes to sleep. I told William Shacker that. He's like, you know, your husband needs to pay more attention to you. So it's like, <laughs> like yeah. Star Trek totally gets more, you know, attention than I do. So that's that. Um, uh, obsessed with the food here. Don't remember the restaurant, but had like the most incredible... German food. I mean, I'm like being exposed to like, I had like, uh, what's it, scotch eggs, but it was like the best scotch eggs I ever had, and like fried pickles, and I don't know, I ate everything in sight. I ate like fried bread pudding. I can't stop talking about it because it's really unique to, I think, Cincinnati. I don't know. I mean, it was delicious. And I ate everything. Yes, good food. Yes, good food. And um, very excited to go to the Van Gogh uh, exhibit because I've wanted to go in every city and I always tend to miss it, so I'm going to do that. But I've loved walking the city. I had no idea how beautiful it was here. It's really beautiful and it reminds me there's like a European feel, and then you were saying that it has like German roots here. Um, but I dig it. Like, I think there's a lot of charm. Here. Um, so, and then the third it, parts that I've got, um, we've all auditioned for things that we wish that we got. I can't remember one in particular because, I mean, 
there's so many parts that I've auditioned for that I haven't gotten just as I've gotten parts other people have gotten. Um, but I try not, I don't live in that because you, there's only one Lori Holden, there's one, only one Katie Sackhoff, there's only one, you know, whoever, like I'm, I'm saying Katie, which is a friend, I just saw her, so she's in my mind. But, um, but, but there's a reason that people get cast and they're right for the roles and, um, and let go, let God, like if, if you don't pick me, then, then that's okay. It's like a love affair. You gotta love them and they gotta love you back. If, for whatever reason you're not doing it for them, it's like okay, I give you, I give, I sign my name, I give you the best word. And if that's not for you, then let go. Like, that's okay. There'll be something else, you know. It's just how it is. Well, thank you so much for coming to Cincinnati to our Cincinnati Comic Expo. I'm glad you're having a great time. I am. Let's give her Lori Holden. <laughs> Afternoon. <laughs> this is it. This is it? We're gonna watch cable for the rest of the day. <laughs> that would be fun. That would be fun. Alright. Well have a good day guys. Thank you. They think order and chaos are somehow opposites and try to control what won't. Do you enjoy pain? Pain don't hurt.